I captured photos of small towns as my full-time job for two years straight. And maybe you think, that sounds nice. What a delightfully innocent project, but not how I do it. I think people are curious why I'm doing the pop-up shop. <laughs> like my entire business experiment. I shoot Thomasville like 800,000 times and I still find new stuff all the time. So, uh, got some canvases back here. So, to be honest with you, I've got some anxiety about driving these canvases uh, right now. I have this large canvas that I have to deliver. Um, and I was really sweating how it would get into my truck. So Nikon D850, 45 megapixel behemoth. Come on. So what is the Small Town Photo Project? I spent the summers between college in a small town called Thomasville, Georgia. It's a town that went from having no cell service to being featured in Southern Living and just about every other top 10 small town list in America. Back when growth was starting, I was taking pictures of it and eventually I got a photo of the water tower. The water tower shot ended up being something that weirdly caught on, and I managed to sell a 60 inch by 40 inch aluminum print of it to a bank in downtown Thomasville. I also sold prints of the Big Oak in downtown Thomasville as well. So I had this idea. What if I could find other Thomasvilles and build a business out of selling prints to the people who are passionate about their town? Yeah, so what I didn't realize was how truly big this project idea was. Like so big that maybe just one guy trying to build relationships in multiple towns, network, and do the legwork it takes to be trusted as an outsider to all these different towns with all these different personalities might be kind of impossible. Regardless, I got to work anyway. I started my list by consulting issues of Southern Living. Basically, I created a list of small towns that were listed next to Thomasville. This would be my North Star. I would try to hit all of these towns and photograph them, much like I did Thomasville. The problem with that is that I spent the time to get to know Thomasville. I took many photos there for months and at different times and learned the area. And with my limited resources, however, I would only be able to get one shot at each of these towns to start. So I was subject to the lighting conditions or whatever else in the small window of time I would be visiting each town. When I really started showing off my Thomasville work, I only had one really good photo and like eight so-so photos. I knew that in order to possibly get this idea off the ground, I would somehow need to find a way to make a large quantity of quality images. And now I don't live in Thomasville. I haven't lived there for any amount of time since 2012. So in 2020, when I started to seriously pursue this idea, I had to drive back and forth. I live six hours away in South Carolina. So in order to take photos of Thomasville or anywhere else other than where I lived, I had to drive there. That's also where I had the most leads. So if I wanted gas money so that I could break even on this whole deal, I had to be putting these photos to work. So I drove back and forth a lot. And I also started taking photos in the small town of Anderson, South Carolina, where I lived. Anderson, however, isn't on any top 10 list, maybe one day, hopefully. So I was beginning to really start to be aware of the fact that despite them all having a Starbucks and a Target, not all small towns are the same. You ready? I'm ready. Uh, we're all, oh, this light just doesn't work. Okay, the ceiling light does not work. Yeah, we're headed out. We're off to a great start. <laughs> Is that sarcasm? About six months, of taking photos of Anderson and Thomasville and the surrounding area, I knew it was time to really start planning out new towns. On the prime list I constructed, two towns in Florida were near the top, Mount Dora and DeLand. Both were within an hour of each other, so I knew I'd be able to efficiently travel down there to capture both towns. But of course, that wasn't enough. 
I hooked my friend Woody into coming with me, but with a catch. We would leave South Carolina at midnight in order to get to the east coast of Florida in time for sunrise. So after that, we would then visit the two small towns on my list and maybe a couple spots on the way back. We almost didn't make it. It's 4.30. <laughs> it's 4.30 in the morning. We almost gave up at a certain point. Luckily, there was a point where Woody decided to take a snooze and then that got me tired. And I thought it was, I was like, we're gonna end up in a ditch or something. Now, I think we're past the point of no return. And I don't know where we are, somewhere in Georgia. Almost 100 miles from Florida. In every photo project I've ever done, it never feels good enough until there's an aspect of suffering in it. And for this one, we definitely suffered. As someone who's fallen asleep at the wheel and totaled a car before, driving all night was tough. But the sunrise turned out to be totally worth it. Worth it. Worth it. I mean, check this out. It's like a boneyard for driftwood. No joke probably 30 minutes before we got here, Woody suggested this place and we just went with it instead of the original place that we could have gone, which would have sucked compared to this. This one trip changed how I saw photography forever. It's when I realized what I really wanted to do. More of this. Creating a photo challenge is my favorite part of photography. I love the process. I love the journey of trying to complete a goal. The problem with the small town photo project, however, is that I left it so big and open-ended that the chase kind of consumed me a bit. This Florida trip was where my drive to capture small towns, though, really started kicking the gear. And after this mind-blowing sunrise experience where our gamble paid off, we drowsily made our way to DeLand. And somehow, we scored a pretty amazing sunset that night in downtown DeLand as well. This trip was like photography cocaine. Get it? Because Florida? Anyway, the next day we made our way to Mount Dora, which was a beautiful town as well. That said, I don't feel like I got very many print-worthy photos of this place. Again, because I couldn't spend much time there. But we were on the clock as Woody had a big boy job. He couldn't just dedicate his life to capturing small towns full time like some sort of maniac. So we made our way next to a town called Cedar Key. It's a fishing village on the west coast of Florida that was known to have a great view for sunsets. And that's where our luck ran out. If you live in Cedar Key and are watching this, I'm sorry. But Cedar Key is depressing, kind of an eerie place. The gloomy weather we had didn't help things. It's called Cedar Key because it used to have tons of cedar for making pencils, I think. But when the cedar got wiped out, it sort of became a Hotel California for Jimmy Buffett fans. That said, I got second place with this photo in a photo competition and won 50 bucks, so that was cool. Turns out that was the only sales I made from any of these images on this trip. That's right, I didn't end up selling any prints of this trip at all, to this day. And now, you might be wondering, how does this guy have all this time to spend doing this small town thing full time? Well, we did this Florida trip in October 2020, so it was COVID times. And before all this, I was shooting weddings, and I assumed starting in March 2020, weddings were over. So I spent my time in between shooting small towns, networking with businesses in order to sell large custom prints to commercial spaces with the photos I had been shooting from this project. And I started a pop-up shop where I would sell prints and stationery and stickers and more in Thomasville and Anderson on the weekends. And then the housing market was also going crazy, so I was shooting a lot of real estate photography as well. Basically, I was doing anything and everything to keep this small town photo project dream going, as well as pay the bills, because my wife was pregnant with our first child. The Florida trip and the images I captured got me so excited about the future of this project, though, that I had a surge of energy. So after this trip, the photo marathon got kicked off in a real way. Almost a year had passed since the Florida trip and I felt like I had somewhat exhausted the Southeast. 
it was time to start capturing small towns in the West. I planned out a trip to Fredericksburg, Texas, one of the two Fredericksburgs on the Small Town Photo Project's original list. Along the way, I'd be able to tackle other small towns on the list as well, namely Laurel, Mississippi and Nacogdoches, Louisiana. I'd be able to stop by the bustling Austin, Texas everyone keeps talking about as well. I was going to take around two weeks solo in my 2004 Toyota Tacoma, my faithful steed that had taken me across the country a couple times before. And this would be the longest, most extensive journey I would have taken for the Small Town Photo Project, and it would also be responsible for the inevitable end of this project once and for all. The first stop was Laurel, Mississippi, a reluctant stop on my trip due to the fact that I had never really had an enjoyable time in the state of Mississippi. Not a massive fan of the place. But a couple months earlier, I visited Wetumpka, Alabama, which was featured in the HGTV reality show, Hometown. So, um, there's a lot of construction going on here. There's like a roundabout. So this town's like really, really doing something. They're, they're busy moving and shaking. There's just a lot of cool stuff going on here, clearly. Like it's just, they're, they're working on it. I, I gotta say, this is, this is a beautiful location for a town. I mean, I'm like, I'm actually stunned. The natural landscape of Wetumpka is gorgeous. I mean, it was totally revamped and I visited shortly after they filmed the show there. They'd done a great job of reinvigorating the town in central Alabama that needed help, so I knew that I had to visit the HGTV Mecca in Mississippi, but was a little surprised by what I found there. First thing when I got there, it felt like half the town was under construction due to the ongoing nature of the show continually renovating the place. A lot of it is under construction. I did not realize that when I came, how much construction there'd be. Yeah, it's really pretty. Uh, I went to the other end of downtown, which is not under construction, and it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna go hang out over there, um, just trying to figure out and get my bearing. The downtown area itself is very nice. It felt very active and had clearly become a destination for tourists who are fans of the show. Every part of downtown and the nicer neighborhood nearby had nice paved roads and was very well kept. While it felt like everything else in the surrounding area was kind of not as nice or well kept. The laurel we have come to see in the show is actually a very small area, meaning that it seems like people who know about Laurel, Mississippi have only seen a very well curated aspect of it. In the not curated parts, the roads were barely paved, which is pretty standard for Mississippi in my experience. And I live in South Carolina, but Mississippi makes our roads look like the best kept roads in America. And there was a lot of poverty there too. And not to say that Laurel is anything special when it comes to a nice downtown next to poor neighborhoods, but I felt like that aspect had been so left out of the show, not that I've seen that many episodes to be honest, that I had a totally different impression of the place based on what I knew before I got there. And I suppose that's movie magic. And I don't think the intent of the show or the people who make it are bad in the slightest. I think growing the economy of a place like Laurel is exciting and really impressive and important. A lot of towns in the Southeast used to be manufacturing towns whose main job centers shut down and anything we can do to try to bring back some of these towns is great in my book. It's partially why I started the project, to help document the invigoration. But my visit to Laurel really had me reevaluating what I was doing with this photo project in the first place. I had been skipping across the water of all these towns, not investing in them. I was kind of just showing up and taking in a way. I didn't get to know the people. This art project was starting to feel like a photography manufacturing job. Like I was wandering around gathering stock photography. And I didn't see it that way at the time, but I think whenever we are aiming for quantity, we are choosing a cheaper path no matter what. And my photos of Thomasville and Anderson had more meaning because I was actually part of those places and invested in them. But when I would leave to go to these other places, I was just showing up and taking photos and leaving. I had no story to tell other than the fact that I was journeying to all these small towns, checking them off a list. I couldn't seem to decide which story I wanted to tell, mine or the story of these towns themselves. That lack of direction really started to become more clear on this trip. And honestly, this really took the steam out of the Texas trip, and I hadn't even made it to Texas yet. The next stop was Nacogdoches, Louisiana, another town on the list. This was an interesting place. Not only did I pronounce the name wrong the whole time I was there. No way. No. Nakedish. Oh my gosh, I've been so, so wrong. For... Nakedish. Oh, I've you know how many people I've told I was going to Nachitoche? But it has a lot of history with being a French colony in America. And 
Unfortunately, I really only got one photo that I really liked from the visit, but that's the game you play when you play it like I was playing it. This strategy of surgically photographing towns as efficiently as possible was not really super conducive to making great work. This trip really stretched that because I was on such a time crunch. That time crunch became a real problem as well when weather conditions changed the schedule of my trip as well. And apparently there's some like tropical storm or something blowing through right where I'm going in Texas. So here's what we got. We got a tropical storm uh, that's come through right where I need to drive. So I'm like, like around here somewhere. So it's clear where I am, but I've got to get over here. I ended up deviating to College Station and taking a bit of a break. I walked around Texas A&M a bit, which was cool, but spent some time catching up on emails and wine in my hotel room. The next day, I headed to Fredericksburg, Texas. I had spent so much of this drive seeing terrain and an environment that was so similar to where I lived. I was excited to finally see some different types of trees and hills and less green overall. After all that driving, the road started to feel new. And I stopped in Bastrop, which I guess is now the home to Tesla and the author Ryan Holiday. Basically, this town has become a neighborhood of Austin in a way that a lot of towns in Northern Georgia are neighborhoods of Atlanta. I visited the visitor center in Bastrop, walked through the museum they had set up in there, but again, I had to get to Fredericksburg by the end of the day, so I had to skip along and keep moving. The difference between the Florida trip and the Texas trip is that the Florida trip was a photographic triumph. The Texas trip, however, felt like a dud from a photo standpoint. I got a few photos I really like in Fredericksburg, but overall, I felt like there was no story for me to tell. Again, why was I there? What was the journey? The Florida trip story had a challenge to it. Explanation as to what you're going through right now. Very confused. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. So a gamble of driving all night for an amazing sunrise that happened to pay off. The Texas trip was just a slow burn of me second guessing this multi-year enterprise I had embarked on. I took a lot of photos, but I don't really remember most of them. I haven't really looked back on them a ton either. The Texas trip fizzled somewhat. I stopped by on the way back to see some friends in Houston. They took me to a Renaissance fair, which was awesome. Turns out, I like me. Then I saw my cousin in New Orleans, dropped by to see family in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Then I went back and revisited Wetumpka, Alabama and took some new photos there. After this trip, I went through the rest of 2021 pretty burned out. I continued the pop-up shop in Anderson and Thomasville. In fact, I hit it really hard. And I continued to hang custom prints in commercial spaces for these towns as well. I slowed down on the small town photo project specific travel almost completely and just focused on the two places that I was more actively invested in. And I think now that I have some distance, I know what the problem with the whole project was. Me. I started this project in a time where I needed to come up with an interesting business around photography. I needed to make a living, but I've always struggled to have the desire to do the normal sort of photography client work. I'm too sensitive for clients maybe, I don't know. But I had all this experience in printing oversized prints for my previous job and I thought growing small towns would be a great target market. But at the end of the day, Will Malone has always wanted to be an artist. So this project suffered from a Jekyll and Hyde battle between artist Will and business Will. At the end of the day though, I think both sides of Will had some major wins. In 2022, I managed to sell more prints than I ever had before, by a lot. And that gave artist Will some options and time to explore his next move. In no way, shape or form do I regret the Small Town Photo Project. It helped me do something I never managed to do before, appreciate my home and the town I actually live in. It gave me a view into other similar sized cities and helped me see some possibilities. And now all the focus I put into traveling to other towns has been going into my own, which is how it should be. We need to be involved in our communities. Photography is always going to be more interesting when we are invested in what's in front of our camera. The rest kind of becomes disposable. I spent a lot of time since the Small Town Photo Project talking about the state of the photography world. I started a podcast mini series called Photography is Dead where I looked at the state of my favorite artistic medium in the face of AI, NFTs, and social media. A big problem with photography today is the lack of investment in our subjects because there's an implicit need for quantity over quality. We need to be posting all the time, sharing, getting out there. And I think that feeling broke me at some point. I think that way of thinking is changing though. We've seen so much disposable work that I think there's room for some really deep work that takes time. We just have to be patient and okay with the long game. Well, I don't know if so Give me just a little
If something's gonna come my way 